Hi everybody, today's video is focusing on Excel. How can we process an Excel file with a bot and apply a few Excel formulas? Even if you might not use this for school really, you will invariably later on have to use Excel and it will come in handy. And quite possibly your parents would be very thankful if you would help them with some Excel work and even teach them a thing or two. So we will start from an Excel file with your supposed grades. So I've created this project already, Excel formulas for school, which is empty for now. I've created the folder inside, data, and inside that we have an Excel file. And these are the subjects, the grades, and we will have here some data we want to calculate with the bot. Well, the grades are not that great, um, maybe they're not yours. Let's say they are mine when I was in school. And we will try to teach the bot to extract some information from this table. For example, where we did quite well, so we can break to our parents. And where we did poorly, so we can quickly identify where we need to focus and improve the most. So we will try first to count how many subjects we had with grades under 5. How many we had with grades 8 or above. And then we can uh, also specify and try to search what are the subjects um, with grades under 5 and also subjects with grades over 8, 8 or more. And we will try to write here with the bot the right answers. So this is our Excel file, we can minimize it from now, and we can start building our bot. So first of all, we will deal with Excel in this example today. So, and for that, we have an activity called Excel Application Scope. We can drag and drop it here. And first thing, we have to specify the workbook path. We can search for it here. We have our folder, Excel formulas for school, we look in the data folder and we find our Excel file here. And now we can start to execute our activities here in the do section. So first of all, we said we wanted to count how many subjects we had in total with a grade under five. And if we just look at it quickly, we should have the last two. And if we do it in Excel directly, let's try the formula first. We have to enter an equal sign first. To let Excel know we want to enter a formula and the formula for counting the elements with the condition is called count if. And then we have the brackets and inside the brackets we have to specify a range and the criteria and the range should be this one from B1 to B10 and then we have a comma and the criteria is less than 5. And we have to specify the criteria in quotation marks. So we can say quotation mark less than five and close the quotation mark. And it works. It's two. And what we have to do now is basically to write this formula inside this cell here. So I will just copy paste the formula here. And we have an activity called write cell. It's this one over here. And we have to specify the sheet. It's sheet number one. We have to specify the cell. And if we look here, we want to write it over here. So it's E1. And then the formula, we need quotation marks. And then our formula here. And we have a problem, we have an error because we actually have quotation marks inside the quotation marks. And to deal with that, we have to double the quotation marks or escape them inside the formula. And this way, UiPath understands that these double quotation marks 
are actually one quotation mark that is escaped inside a string. And the error goes away. And we can do the same for finding out the grades 8 or more. Um, we expect to have a, quite a similar formula, so we can copy paste this. So we can call this one count over count if over 8. The previous one was count if under 5. And here we have the cell E2. We can modify this here. And the formula should be quite similar, same range, but we have more than 8, and we can actually say more or equal 8 as well. So 8 or more in this case. And this should fill in our formula here as well. So we can delete this, save, close, and let's run it to see what's happening until now. So execution has finished. And here are our two formulas and the results. 2 under 5 and 3, 8 or more. So we have 1, 2, and 3. That's correct. All right. And now we want to identify the actual subjects with grades under 5. So that would be math and history, for example. How can we do that? We should actually read from Excel the data table. So this data table. And then check which grades are under 5 and then take the respective subject names. Maybe save them to a string and at the end write the strings to the right cells here. So let's do that. We have an activity called read range. We have two of them actually. Um, if we have already the Excel application scope, we can use the read range under Excel. And we have to specify the range here. So we want to read this data table from A1 all the way down to B10. That's what is interesting for us. So we can see here A1, two points, and then B10. And when we read the range, we have to save it somewhere. And we have to create a variable of data type data table. We can create it on spot with control K. We can call it DT from data table underscore grades, for example, and that will create our variable here. And once we have read this, we can loop through all the lines in the data table, do our checks, and then construct our strings with the respective subjects that meet this criteria. So to loop, we have the for each activity, but because we are in a data table now, we can actually use the for each row activity. And we can put here our data table variable name, dt underscore grades. And now we have to write our conditions. So we have an if. And the condition here would be the current row, or actually the second element on the current row, because first of all, this will be the current row. And we can access separately the first and the second element. And we have to remember that the first position starts from zero, not from one. So this would be current row bracket zero. This would be current row bracket one. So we have to check the number on the position number one, convert it to a number actually, and then check if it's less than five for our first if. So we say current row brackets one, that is our number our grade, and then we make it to string for now, we have a string, and everything we convert then to a number, to integer, so like this. And now we actually have a number here, and then we check first if this is less than 5. And if it is less than 5, then it means we can already construct our first string with the subjects which have grades under 5. And we can define two variables for that. We can have here um, str underscore under 5, for example. It will be a string. And another one, str underscore over 8, for example. 
can use the scope as the full program or the do. That's just to have them visible outside this for each row because we would want to at the end write them to Excel as well. So if this is true, if the grade is less than five, we need to use an assign and update already one of the strings. So we say str under five will be str under five plus you can put maybe a comma here and then plus current row. We have brackets zero. So the first position because that's that should be the subject, one of these. And we have an error still. It is uncertain of, of the type here. So um, we just have to specify that this is a string as well. And then it will know it has to concatenate this string over here and then add the current one. So with this formula, we keep adding to our current string of subjects with grades under five, which is empty at the beginning. Then we add the first one and then again the second one and so on, depending on how many subjects match this criteria up here. So that's okay now. And if this condition is not met, we can show the else and then use another if here. And now we will be checking if the grade is equal or higher than eight. And we have basically the same formula here, but we have here higher or equal eight. And if this is happening, then we have a similar assign and we say string over eight equals string over eight plus comma plus current row zero to string. And this should build up our strings. And at the end, we can just write them to Excel. We can make this smaller here. We can copy paste from above the Excel write cell activity. So after the four, after we've built our strings, we will write them to cells E3 and E4. So this one will be E3. So we say subjects under five. And for the expression, we just have our string now, which is string under five and then we copy paste this and we say subjects over eight we have e4 here and we have our string subjects over eight and that should be it let's close the excel file and run this see what's happening it has run successfully we can check the excel file now and here they are, we have math history and we have English sports and economy. And we notice that the display is not really nice because it starts with a comma and a space. That's because we keep adding at the beginning to an empty string. So there was nothing, then comes the comma and the space and then the next word. And a quick way to make it nicer would be just to cut out the first two characters of the string and to do it we can very quickly use a string formula called substring. So we put a point and we say substring and then we have to mention here the start index as a number so at which character we want to start and because we want to cut out the first two characters so character on the position 0 and 1 we start from position 2. We can do the same here substring position 2. We can run again. This would update the Excel file. We check it now and there you go. This looks much nicer now. That was it. We've learned how to read Excel files and write Excel formulas from our Your Path bots. We have used conditions to select certain informations from a data table in Excel and we have used a few string formulas to get a job done. If you like this video, please hit the like button. This tells YouTube that this video is worth sharing with others and spread the word among your friends about what you are learning here. Stay curious and see you next time.